what's good everyone oj here welcome back to another video today we've got a bunch of topics to go over but before we get into anything please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first and make sure you check out the link in the description below for our shin megami tensei 5 giveaway that is going down this week so you want to make sure that you want to enter into that because i'm giving away a premium edition of smt5 shipped worldwide available for anybody so you don't want to miss out on that now getting into the topics here first we're starting off with nintendo in 2022 so we know that nintendo has a lot of big games there's bayonetta there's the legend of zelda which we'll talk about there is kirby there is pokemon there are just tons of games that are coming out for the nintendo switch to keep fans happy but what are the games that are going to be announced for 2022 and potentially launch that year or even the following year well i've got three games that i want to talk about first before we get into some other titles now the first game that i want to discuss is fire emblem on the nintendo switch so i've been tracking this game for quite some time now after the release of fire emblem three houses what we do know is that intelligent systems has been linked or rumored to a couple of different games here now they've even been linked to the remakes of the advance wars games that way forward is doing but there's also been paper mario that they've been linked to to potentially be doing and also a brand new fire emblem game whether that be a remake or a new game now here's what i think with fire emblem guys i think that there's going to be a new fire emblem echoes line of game and i think that it's going to be path of radiance i think they jump up quite a bit from what they did from the last fire emblem game and that was fire emblem echoes shadows of valentia so i do see nintendo kind of going with that with intelligent systems and maybe we get a remake of fire emblem path of radiance i think that would probably be one of the best games to do i don't feel that they need to go in order and i hope nintendo and intelligent systems don't feel that they need to do that because the last time that they did a remake it was shadows of valentia which was gaiden right that was all the way back in the day so i don't feel that they need to go in any particular order they can kind of just do them as they see fit or as the flow of what fans are looking for and right now i do think that fans would love to see path of radiance considering the prices that are jumping up on on ebay for the game on the gamecube and even radiant dawn but i think the trickiest thing is how they get both of the games in there when it comes to all of ike's story how do they get radiant dawn and also path of radiance all into one game i think that if they did do that that would be something that fans would get really excited for but it's also a little bit of a risky project because remakes don't do as well as the actual new games in the series so we'll see what goes with that but I'd love to see Fire Emblem come back, whether that is a remake of what they do or it's something brand new. I think that with Fire Emblem Three Houses and the sales of that game, well over 3 million units at this point, Nintendo has a lot of leeway to go with the next Fire Emblem game, whether they want to do a remake and also say, hey, we've got both incoming. Because a lot of people don't know, but Koei Tecmo helped out quite a bit when it comes to fire emblem three houses they can get more developers to help on with the project now that they know that this game can sell three million units plus if they're going to do a brand new title so i can see nintendo intelligent systems maybe koei tecmo and other people helping out bring up the next fire emblem game and make it a bigger and better project for everybody involved i just think that what they need to do is just make sure that they kind of sure up some of the graphics and stuff going forward because i think that's where fire emblem takes the next step is if we can actually get the visuals to match up with some of the gameplay and you're going to probably get people to buy the game upward of the four or five million unit range if you can do that so i feel that fire emblem is definitely going to be announced i feel that fire emblem every about three years or so they announce a new fire emblem game the last one we got was 2019 so we're due for something from the fire emblem range but hey you never know i mean they could just say let's just wait till the next generation of the switch because the switch at least this current switch that we have doesn't have more than two to three years left so i feel that they might want to just wait and maybe they kind of announce it when it's a you know new thing kind of like how they did with xenoblade chronicles 2 at the january presentation so maybe they do something like that but we're gonna have to wait and see i'm thinking they've probably been working on a new fire emblem game so we'll see what goes on there next up is golden sun on the nintendo switch and the reason why i think that this game has a potential or possibility to be announced that there's been some rumors with golden sun and also camelot is finished 
with Mario Golf. That game is done. There's no more new DLC. They finished everything. And apparently, based on some of the rumors out there, they've been working on something, at least a template for what they're going to do with Golden Sun. Now, this might be a little bit too early. Might be reaching a little bit with this one here. But I do feel that Golden Sun is coming back in some way, shape, or form. But I think that the most interesting thing with this is how are they going to do this? Is it going to be a remake of the GBA title? Are they going to go back and maybe fix the DS title? Bring that back and not remasters, guys. Like actual like remakes or not just like straight ports because I just don't think Nintendo's going to do that with those old school crusty kind of, you know, GBA and DS games. So how are they going to do it? Is it going to be like a re-envisioning of what they wanted to do back then? Or is it going to be a brand new Golden Sun game? Because Golden Sun has been dead for quite some time. A lot of people haven't played Golden Sun, don't know the characters, don't know who Isaac is don't know anything when it comes to golden sun so i think that the way that they navigate this is going to be very interesting i feel that what they should probably do is just remake the first title i mean just remake it re-envision it put new quests put new details just make it a whole new game just almost make it different right just almost make it completely different from what they did before and still make the same classic golden sun gameplay still have the basis of the story and everything but just add a bunch to it to reintroduce people to the characters of what golden sun is about then and of course the battle system i mean i think that the dynamic camera angle was one of the things that was very unique for me when i played it back on the gba the fact that it was kind of like tilted and like to the side a little bit and then it did different attacks and kind of changed up based off of that so if you can make that dynamic camera battle angle with turn-based combat i think that would be really good for today's day and the switch fans out there that are loving these rpgs like smt5 that are coming out persona 5 is fantastic as well so turn-based rpgs RPGs are still here and can still sell well. So I think that would be really cool if Golden Sun kind of came out swinging like that. Now, the last for this segment here is Mario Strikers. I think that Mario Strikers is going to be coming as well. And here's the reason why I think that. So Luigi's Mansion 3, once again, the DLC has been done for quite some time. The updates have been done for quite some time. Highly polished game, very good, sold extremely well, over 10 million units. So well that Nintendo said, you know what, we can't let this studio go at next level because they wanted to put themselves up for sale. Nintendo's like, you know what, we can't let this Canadian studio go. We got to snatch them up, which is interesting because they haven't even purchased a studio like Intelligent Systems that they've been working with now for like 30 years or whatever the case is, right? So it's interesting that they said, hey, you know what, this studio is so good and make sure they don't go anywhere else. So I think that with that security, with next level games, I think that the fact that Luigi's Mansion 3 is done, that this is the perfect opportunity to bring back Mario Strikers. Mario Strikers is coming back and I feel that it's going to be a very good game, especially on the Nintendo Switch. Mario Strikers has been absent since the Wii era. We got Mario Strikers on the GameCube, we got Mario Strikers on the Wii, and then pretty much nothing so far, right? There was no 3DS game to come out, there was no Wii U game or anything like that. We got nothing! So I think that Mario Strikers is next up, and if they did, oh my gosh, that would be so good because Mario Strikers, to me, was one of the best Mario sports games, if not the best Mario sports games out there, and I'm not even that big of a soccer fan at all, but Mario Strikers is something else. I really like that game on the GameCube. The Wii game was okay, but it hurt my hands playing it on the Wii remote for some reason, just using like the different specials and stuff. I don't know, that little nub on the analog just kind of hurt my hands at times, and there was no option to use a classic controller, which was classic Nintendo back in the Wii era. So I would love to see them kind of go back to that nucleus, that core that made Mario Strikers on the GameCube such a great game. And of course, now you have standard controls, and imagine what you can do with HD Rumble, kicking the ball and everything like that. That would just be incredible. I think that would be so good so yeah i am down for a new mario strikers game as well so those are just three picks that i do have for next year in 2022 that could be announced along with all the like avalanche of games that are coming out what games do you feel could happen from different studios that nintendo's has or they work with let me know your thoughts in the comment section below all right and moving into the next topic here more on 2022 games and the legend of zelda Breath of the Wild 2. So this game is getting very interesting in terms of what people feel the name is going to be. Nintendo's been very good. There's been no leaks. There's been no leaks outside of some of the gameplay stuff, which there was some patents that people did show off or that Nintendo leaked or whatever the case was or somebody leaked and it showed off some of the stuff that we already saw in the trailer. So some of the gameplay aspects. So that's no big deal, but we don't know what the heck the name is. We don't know what happened to Link. We don't know what's happening to Princess Zelda. We don't know really anything about this game outside of the little bit that they've showed and the theory videos out there. So this is pretty much 
under wraps here and there's been a lot of talk whether this game is going to make 2022 right people have been discussing if it's going to make that because nintendo stated that they're aiming for 2022 and it's not releasing solid december or whatever or november 1st or whatever the case is however i think that this is a lock for 2022 there's no way that nintendo would have announced legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 in 2019 if it wasn't going to come out till 2023 that just doesn't seem like right to me with at least in the switch era i know there's been delays and stuff like that there was metroid prime but that game got canned you know that game got completely canned and restarted development so that's the reason what happened to that game but for the most part they've been pretty good with a lot of the titles they'll delay them for maybe a year or so but i think that nintendo personally wanted to get this game out probably this year but they just had issues whatever the development was with kobe the prior year or something like that so let's go ahead and let's get into why breath of the wild 2 is coming out in 2022 i believe that it will be i think that it's a lock and that there is going to be just a huge celebration of the legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 in 2022 but also a good friend of the channel Per snyder over there at ign the cco the big boss over there one of the big bosses over at ign feels that nintendo is very excited about 2022 and a lot of it has to do with legend of zelda breath of the wild releasing so ign chief content officer Parrish schneider in a new podcast posted on the ign games youtube channel said this quote it does sound like nintendo is going to have a pretty good year next year schneider said so I would not take the absence of big stuff at the Game Awards as a sign that maybe Breath of the Wild is delayed or that they don't have other stuff because it sounds like people at Nintendo are very excited about 2022. So yeah, Nintendo's lineup, like I stated before in 2022, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Bayonetta 3, Advanced Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp, Splatoon 3, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Also, Triangle Strategy is dropping next year, too. So, it's just game after game after game after game after game. But here's the thing, though, guys. I think that Breath of the Wild 2 is one of those games that you want to make sure that there's no spoilers. Like, you see how Zelda fans can get at times. I remember I talked about, like, one of, like, the giants in the, the first Breath of the Wild. And people went absolutely insane that I did that, even though Nintendo gave them the material to show it off in game informer and it was like a relatively early boss that you encounter or you know enemy that you encounter or it's not anything special you know and people just went nuts so yeah this is one of those games that you just want to make sure that everything is just perfect for the release that you surprise people when nintendo announced the game back in 2019 it blew me away i had no idea that they'd even make a breath of the wild sequel because the legend of zelda breath of the wild was selling really well there was really no need. There was really no need to do it. It was still in the top MPD charts. Everything was fine with The Legend of Zelda. And they could have just waited and just done remakes or remasters. They could have just done Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess and all that. But they said, you know what? We can make, you know, we made a billion fulfillion dollars. We can make like 10 billion fulfillion dollars, you know, on this here. They said, let's just make a sequel follow-up. So I think that it's very similar in the vein of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and then also Majora's Mask. They wanted to capitalize on that momentum, Majora's Mask didn't do as well as Ocarina of Time, but I have a feeling that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 is going to do a lot better considering just the difference in today's day, especially with the install base. I think that the problem with Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask, the install base wasn't rapidly growing, but the Switch, the install base has rapidly grown since Breath of the Wild's release. So I think that it's going to be very much different there. And of course, you know, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of the greatest games of all time, in my opinion. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they do going forward. But yeah, I'm a firm believer that it's 2022. And I think that it's going to be super hype when they show off the game. I think E3 is going to have a blowout there. Nintendo's been known to do E3 blowouts for Zelda games. And I think that it's going to release sometime probably in November of 2022 so we'll see exactly what happens there for the game but i'm looking forward to seeing what they do just because the game just has so much unique elements like it has so much stuff that you would have never thought to be in a zelda game link going through walls like lamillion from my hero you have like the sheikah slate attached to his arm you have this weird tribal print on him tattoo from something that happened to him that um, type of malice that kind of attacked him got the long flowing hair i mean there's just crazy stuff here you have some of the leaks that showed off like the 
like the sky elements the underground elements you know of course the regular ones i mean i don't think it's just going to be breath of the wild again i think that they're going to do a bunch of other cool and unique gameplay ideas so i'm excited to see what they come up with so what are your thoughts on legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 and next year also the 2022 lineup how it's looking so far without any new announcements no nintendo directs because you know they're going to have those next year man i think this is setting up to be a super hype year let me know your thoughts in the comment section below all right and moving on to the next topic here guys we got a monster hunter rise update version 3.7.0 it's good to see that capcom is still supporting monster hunter rise at the end of the year the game came out back in march this was actually one of my favorite experiences of the year and i'm so happy to see more stuff being added in because the monster hunter rise new update 3.7.0 is out for everyone and it paves the way for a new event quest and fixes to a whole slew of bugs considering how polished this game is the fact that they're still fixing stuff is incredible now the full patch notes i'm not going to go over everything because there is just a ton of stuff here but know that they did fix some issues with gyro so people that are having some problems with gyro and aiming which is a big deal for a lot of people on the nintendo switch if you're using some of those gunner classes and all of that so you definitely want to make sure that that gyro is fixed up as well fix some text issues which is always good to fix that fix some different player buddy issues as well being able to like not ride on certain you know weavers and not ride on certain buddies and stuff like that or buddies doing weird things so yeah got that all fixed up as well fix some other stuff with some monsters plus also the base facility fix some other stuff there too plus the cool thing here, which is the big thing, the main additions and changes, new event quests will be available every single week, and new DLC can be purchased from the Nintendo eShop. So there you go, guys. Everything is updated and ready to go for Monster Hunter Rise 3.7.0. You have the PC version that's coming out early next year as well, so more players are going to be able to jump in. Unfortunate that Capcom was not able to get the cross play going and the cross save. I would have double dipped right into the PC version of it if I can be able to play on there and just bring over my save and everything and play with you guys, whether it's on the Switch or PC. I know that they probably tried really hard. They just couldn't get it done, which is very unfortunate because they probably thought about it from the very beginning, but just the different whatever, however the game was built in terms of Switch compared to PC, just wasn't able to get it done. Whereas other developers have been able to get it done with certain things so very unfortunate right i mean the witcher got it done so very unfortunate but at the same time it is what it is but i don't know if i can play the pc version because i don't feel like starting over so i'll probably just stick with the switch version for right now at this point which i need to get back into but what are your thoughts when it comes to monster hunter rise and how they're still supporting it with new updates fixes and of course events and are you looking forward to the sunbreak dlc coming out summer of 2022 let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here. It looks like Ubisoft is going through some issues and an exodus of developers. Hmm, very interesting here. So let's go ahead and crack this one open. So multiple key developers at Ubisoft have been confirmed to have left the company this year, VG Charts writes. This includes Chief Studios Operating Officer, and I'm going to butcher these names, Virgin Haas, Far Cry Executive Producer Dan Hay, and Assassin's Creed Art Director Rafael Locaste. A new report from Axios has revealed that far more employees have left Ubisoft in the past 18 months. According to the current and former Ubisoft developers, Ubisoft employees have described the large number of people leaving the company as the Great Exodus and the Cut Artery. Five of the top 25 accredited people who worked on 2021's Far Cry 6 have already left Ubisoft, and 12 out of the top 50 people who worked on 2020's Assassin's Creed Valhalla have left as well. Ubisoft Montreal and Toronto Studios have also seen at least 60 employees leave in the last six months. That is a huge half year, 60 employees. Imagine having a big studio and 60 people over a half year leave. That is insane. I've never heard anything like that, at least in recent memory. I'm pretty sure it's happened, but haven't heard anything like this when it comes to a major publisher like if they're not getting fired right it's one thing to get fired or let go but just to leave on your own accord now two developers 
told Axios that with so many people leaving, it has slowed down or stalled the development of games. A range of reasons from current and former employees were given as to why so many were leaving the company. This includes, quote, low pay, an abundance of competitive opportunities, frustration at the company's creative direction, and unease at Ubisoft's handling of workplace misconduct scandal that flared in the mid-2020s. One former Ubisoft employee was disappointed by the directives given from Ubisoft's headquarters and said, quote, There is something about management and creative scraping by the bare minimum that really turned me away. Ubisoft management says that is on top of the exodus by hiring 2,600 people since April. However, in the previous two years, it had hired over 405,000 people. Quote, our attrition today is a few percentage points above where it typically is. Ubisoft head of people ops Anikia grant but it's still within industry norms linkedin reports the attrition rate at ubisoft is 12 percent this is lower than the 16 percent at activision blizzard and we all know what's going on there but higher than electronic arts nine percent take two's eight percent and epic games seven percent one employee who left said that they tried to work with the company to reform its culture as there were reports of abuse, discrimination, and more at the company. However, the employee was disappointed by what they heard from their bosses. Quote, they constantly emphasize moving on and looking forward while ignoring the complaints, concerns, and cries of their employees, the developer said. The company's reputation was too much to bear. It's legitimately embarrassing. Ubisoft last week announced Splinter Cell Remake, which is in development at Ubisoft Toronto. Ubisoft has greenlit the development of Splinter Cell Remake that will draw from the rich canvas of the brand, said Ubisoft in an announcement. Quote, led by Ubisoft Toronto, the game will be rebuilt from the ground up using Ubisoft's own Snowdrop engine, the same engine being used to develop Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, as well as Ubisoft's upcoming Star Wars game. Delivered new generation visuals and gameplay, and the dynamic lighting and shadows the series is known for. So... There you go, man. And then you also had the whole NFT situation that's going on, the chords thing. And yeah, it just seems like Ubisoft is going through a rough time at this point. And I can definitely see people leaving after Far Cry. I mean, they refuse to evolve that series. And if you're someone that's creative or if you see that there's other opportunities to make different or more exciting games, you're going to bounce because Ubisoft is not doing anything new when it comes to a lot of the staples. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was a buggy mess. It looks and it feels like a game that has a bunch of people leaving and not wanting to be there because look at that they can't even properly make the game to where there's not so many freaking bugs and crashing and issues with the titles so their games feel like people just don't want to be there or don't feel like doing anything there's not anything creative or new i think the bosses just want to put out the most basic product and that's just my own opinion when it comes to ubisoft games and i've stopped playing assassin's creed i've stopped playing far cry i've stopped playing all of their ghost recon and stuff like that it's just crusty at this point in my opinion now they still have some gems i think that mario plus rabbits is going to be a really cool game i think that rayman legends is really dope as well and i'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the avatar game and also star wars so i think that ubisoft can rebound but yeah ignoring all the problems when it comes to the abuse and the workplace culture and all that isn't a good idea for your games and yeah it's going to slow things down people are going to leave and all that so hopefully ubisoft can rebound and hopefully they can actually change their culture because yeah they had a lot of issues and it's not done yet there's still a lot of stuff that they need to fix up at the company so what are your thoughts when it comes to everything here with ubisoft are you looking forward to their games let me know in the comment section below all right and moving on to the final topic here guys it looks like final fantasy 7 remake intergrade is definitely coming to steam at some point so square enix final fantasy 7 remake intergrade released for the pc via epic game store last week on december 16th bg charts writes but a new data mine by twitter user atelier tool reveals that the game will most likely be coming to steam once the epic games exclusive contract ends the game itself has a Steam app ID that was created six months after the release of the PS4 version in October 2020. Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade first released for the PlayStation 5 on June 10th, while the original Final Fantasy VII Remake released for the PlayStation 4 in April 2020. So there you go as well. This is what Just Call Me wrote or Atelier Tool had to say. I can confirm that Final Fantasy VII Remake is planned to release for Steam after Epic Games exclusive contract ends. The game app ID used for the dev test is 1462040. And there is the Steam profile. The app has been created in October 2020, six months after the release on PS4. So I think that what's going on here, guys, 
is that this game is going to be six months after the epic game store so i have the game and it's a bit rough when it comes to it on epic game store when it comes to like the options and all of that but that will probably get fixed up in the next few months or so here i think that we're probably going to see this game around maybe i would say april or may it's going to be about six months for the exclusivity deal i think that's how long that they usually have them on the epic game store i don't think it would stretch out to a year i don't think it would be but it might but i'm guessing that it's going to be sometime around yeah april or may that we see this game on steam which is cool right then eventually maybe it comes to the xbox platform and then it just trickles down from there because this game had a lengthy in terms of exclusivity when it comes to the ps4 and then the ps5 and then the epic game store and then steam meanwhile while square enix just collects money from each one of these uh, developers or each one of these entities first from playstation and now from epic and then maybe steam afterwards so yeah it's going to be very interesting to see exactly what's fixed up for this game because steam users aren't going to be able to accept what happened with this game in terms of the options and how it launched on pc with some of the stuttering and stuff based off of the lack of options for pcs and different ranges and everything so it's going to be cool to see what happens and overall the game is still very good even on the epic game store so what do you guys think about this you looking forward to playing some final fantasy 7 remake integrate on steam what do you think about the rest of the topics that we discussed let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and we will see you for the next video peace